Back to awareness, everyone. When many people think of breast cancer, they think it's only a disease that affects women. But did you know that men are affected as well? Compared to white men, though, black men in the U.S. have higher rates of breast cancer. They're diagnosed at a younger age and they have a 53% higher incidence rates. But still, their stories often remain silent. But speaking out loud today about his journey is Travis Douglas. Travis, thank you so much for being here with us no today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, wow. Uh, it is an honor to speak with you, to talk with you. I know a lot of people are like, is that the guy that slays hair? Yes, that is me, <laughs> Travis Douglas. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> going to confirm that information for y'all. But uh, Travis, this is very serious what happened to you. Yes. And we don't hear this story from men. So, Absolutely. So walk us through your breast cancer journey. Uh, so last year, I found a lump in my breast. And upon finding, finding the lump, I went to uh, my doctor. Mm -hmm. They sent me out to get a sonogram and a mammogram. And it was later confirmed that it was breast cancer. What was your reaction? My reaction was I was very shocked. I was shocked because, um, first of all, the little that I did know about breast cancer was that it had to be uh, something that was genetic. So I thought I possibly was in the clear. Anybody in your family no with one. breast cancer? No, no one. one. Mom, I was, I'm aunt. the first and the only. Really? Yes. What was one of the first things that you remember doubting about your diagnosis? Did you um, think the doctors were wrong? Did you say it can't be me? I'm a man. What went through your head? Um, I, I really doubted that. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be. It, it's it's no chances in the world that I could have been diagnosed with something like this. Wow, how did that diagnosis affect you? Um, well, first of all, it, it played on my psyche a bit, mm -hmm. um, but however, it also changed my life, my physical life. Uh, the stuff that I normally was doing, now that consists of doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. um, it took me from work. Um, I didn't know what that future would look like for me as well. So it really played on my, my mental ca capacity to say, Mm, what is this going to look like yeah. in the future for you? And what stage did the doctors catch? Um, mine was uh, stage 1A. Stage 1A. For those who are not uh, familiar with that terminology, what exactly does that mean? Was that an early stage? Yes, that's early stage. Okay. And um, and it was grade two. So the grade two also determines the diam the <coughs> excuse me the diameter mm -hmm. of the tumor. Wow. Uh, what are some of the things that you had to change? from your day to day after this diagnosis? Um, after my diagnosis, um, as I said before, having to go to appointments, but um, uh, being down mm -hmm. after my surgery yeah. um, for like six weeks. So that means I didn't go to work. And then upon getting treatment, that was also uh, a physical task on my body. Yeah. So I dealt with a lot of side effects from my chemo and things. As news started to spread, or the news as you shared rather about your diagnosis with your family and friends, what was their reaction? And what would you have wanted in that moment that you may have not received from others who were not experiencing what you were experiencing? Well, um, when I broke the news to my family, I think it was how I broke the news to them. Um, prior to me talking to my mom, because my mom is someone who takes things really hard, yeah. um, I had to make sure that I was in good standing. Um, and that I delivered the news to her in good spirit and let her know that I was okay with the process and the journey that I was going through. And so when I was able to convey that to her and my friends and my family, everything was honest and truly easy peasy lemon squeezy and oh, I had good. a really big support system. Good, 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 good. Not everyone has that big support system. Sometimes we hear the stories about what you should say or what you shouldn't say. Yes. Um, thankful that wasn't your experience, for, but for anyone watching out there today, who may not know how to react to someone who has shared that news, what would be your advice? I would always say, ask them what they need. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times we um, are quick to respond and uh, just jump to what we think, but ask that individual that's going through that process, what do you need? What would you have me do? How would you, how would you like for me to be there for you? Yeah. Where are you now with your diagnosis? Are you still going through treatment? Did you have to go under any operations? What's the status? Yes, yeah, so I did uh, have a mastectomy done and I am currently cancer free by the grace of God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. And um, now I'm, um, I did do chemotherapy and now I'm currently doing uh, hormone therapy drug okay. called uh, tamoxifen. Okay, how does that help you? Um, it helps blocks off the estrogen because my, my cancer was estrogen induced. Okay. So it helps blocks off the estrogen so that I will, I will it will be, a, it's a preventative measure for future reoccurrence. Um, the mastectomy, having to go 
undergo that as a man. I know that women sometimes they're like, these are my girls. This is what makes me a woman. Um, and so it's hard. But for you, did you go through any of that? Um, at first, I thought about what it would look like. Mm -hmm. But I was like, OK, my health over my vanity space. Yeah. But um, I am considering uh, doing reconstruction. Thank you for being so transparent. No problem. Because no as problem. I mentioned at the beginning of this interview, we we typically don't hear from the men. They don't right. like to share their stories. Right. It's like keeping on the low type of thing. Yes. With that being said, and you telling your story out loud, and again, thank you so much for that, what would you like to share with all the men watching out there? I would like to tell all of the men, if you find anything that's unusual, that has not been there before, make sure that you go get yourself checked. Also, do examinations. Wow, okay. Is that how you discovered your life? Yes, I discovered mine. Um, well, mistakenly examining, examining myself. I was yeah. actually taking a shower and just rinsing off yeah. and I felt the lump, so wow. yes. And I'm so glad you didn't ignore it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yes. because especially you work in a very fast paced industry, you're moving around, you're going from shoes to the styling chair. Yes. I yes. mean, you do so much, so I'm so glad that you didn't ignore that. And uh, how was your response with your medical team? Sometimes we hear stories about people saying that, oh, I had to advocate for myself because my concerns weren't taken seriously. Yes, I will say that I had a really good medical team, good. but I will say that Faith Strong, if it had not been for that group of women telling me what I should ask for, mm -hmm. um, what I should talk about, um, what you might want to look out for, I don't think this journey would have been as smooth of a transition as it has been. Mm, that support. Yes. So important so important and that leads us to our next segment after the break we're going to talk more about faith strong and what the organization provides for people who are survivors and thrivers and even metavivers of breast cancer but travis thank you so much for joining us truly appreciate it how can people stay connected with you uh look me up on ig travisbernarddouglas.com all righty we're going to take a quick break much more on bringing awareness about breast cancer on awareness after the break 